I'm now joined by Matt the Mangler Bassett. Matt is coming off a huge victory over UFC vetri- veteran Diego Nunes at this weekend's Bellator, taking his pro record to 13-4 and four and his Bellator record to 4-0. and oh. Matt, thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. First of all, I've got to say congratulations. That was one hell of a fight. Yeah, it, was a, it felt like one hell of a fight too. <laughs> I, mean, I had it, a lot of fun. It, was re- it really was a, a back-and-forth fight. I mean, uh, let's talk a little bit about going to the fight, of course. I mean, Diego Nunes was probably one of the biggest names in the uh, in the tournament. So what were your views on him as an opponent? How did you feel going into the fight? You know what? Uh, I felt really confident with my skill. I, I felt that uh, striking-wise, um, he had nothing that you know I haven't seen before. And um, I have a really uh, elusive game defensively, and I have a very... Um, deceptive game offensively so it's really hard to to find my timing and find where i'm coming from and uh i think that's what kind of kept diego flat-footed and uh kept him kept him like right in front of me and and easier to hit so um going into the fight i was really confident with myself and uh confident that diego was gonna stand with me so uh i felt like i was gonna win before the fight and i felt like i won as soon as the fight was over you say there about him going to stand with you. So was that your game plan going in then? You wanted to keep the fight standing? Yes. Um, and it's because I, I've seen guys have trouble taking him down because uh, he's got really, really good hips. And uh, his takedown defense with his back on the cage is, is, is really good. So I didn't want to gas or, uh, you know, even slow down just a tiny bit. So uh, I embraced the fact that I was going to be striking with uh, one of the best strikers in the world. And, uh, I just upped my game, up my cardio striking, and I, I tried to take it to him. I mean, you, you, you definitely did that. I mean, you, there, there didn't seem to be an issue with your cardio at all during the fight, and it wasn't it wasn't like it was a slow-paced fight. I mean, it was all-out action, literally, for the whole 15 minutes. Uh, and, yeah. you know, you were able to push the pace. I mean, you landed some huge, huge shots. Were you surprised he, that you didn't put him away? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised at all, because I've seen uh, several of his fights. Like, I'm a, I'm a huge Diego fan, Uh you know, I've been watching Diego for years, and uh, he, he'll get hit with some big shots. And like the only time he's ever been stopped was his last fight. So, you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't assuming the finish. I knew I was going to have to work for it. You know. Now he he also landed some big shots as well. So how did you feel on on the receiving end of those shots? Um, I have a I have a monster chin, and that's uh, honestly that's the reason why I got into MMA because I could take a, a really big shot. Um, uh, the the fight the fight is fun too, but I could take a really big shot. Um, the only one I didn't see his knee, and I think that's what dropped me. But as soon as I hit the ground, I was one hundred percent there. Um, I knew he hit me with the knee. It wasn't like I was out of it or anything. And um, you know, he hit me with some big shots here and there. But for the most part, if you look back at the tape, I blocked uh, you know ninety nine percent of his kicks, ninety nine percent of his punches. So. Uh, my forearms are tired and my legs are tired from blocking punches, punches and kicks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, then it was he. He threw a jumping knee, didn't he? And he caught you just right, literally on on the button. But like you said, you recovered really quickly. Now yeah. it, it really was a back and forth fight. And for me, watching it as a fan, it was one of those fights where I was watching it thinking, I actually don't know who's won this fight. You know, because it was you both took big shots, you both landed big shots. So when it went to the judges' scorecard, how confident were you that you'd got the decision? I was one hundred percent confident. I got the second round, and about. 51% confident I got the third round. <laughs> That's how close I, uh, I thought it was. Um, when you're in the fight, I mean, you know, you, you, you feel something that, you know, other people don't. So uh, I, I knew I was in his head in the second and third round. I knew I was getting the better of the exchanges. Every time he would come at me, uh, I would counter punch him. Every time I was finishing every combination, um, and I felt like I got the better of him in the third round. The second round wasn't close. And I don't really feel like the, the first round was all that close based upon the knee that he caught me with. Uh, that one judge that scored a 37, my guess is he didn't see the knee land. Maybe he just saw me go to the ground, you know what I mean? Uh, so, so I, I mean, I guess I could see why he scored a 30-27. But right after the fight, uh, the cameras were on me, and I, I think you can hear me saying, I definitely had rounds two and three, right? Rounds two and three. And... Uh, my corners believed I do, and, and uh, I think that's what uh, the, the judges thought I had to, two and three for sure. 
Now, as, as well, when the decision was called, you could you could see how much it meant to you. So talk us through the emotions and of getting that such a after after such a, a draining fight, and I imagine an emotionally draining fight as well. The way it's back and forth, and over such a well-known opponent, what did the win mean to you? Oh man, it was so awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm still so happy. I, I, I'm really happy. Um, it, being picked to be in the tournament was one thing. I was really excited, but you know, there's always. Being a, a competitor, you always want to do your best. You want to go out there and give your best. And you're always wondering if the real you will show up, you know. And um, and I was really excited at the fact that the, really the second and third round, the real me showed up. First round, I was a little hesitant here and there. Um, but the, the second and third round, I, I showed up to fight. Uh, the real me showed up. And um, you know what? It's uh, you. You could tell after the fight. I just kind of dropped to my knees, and I was just so happy. And so, uh, and then like all my fans were there, and they were all cheering me on. <laughs> what a night! What a night! I'm reliving it right now. <laughs> it, it was amazing. How does it feel then? You know, as a as a fighter, then how does it feel to know you're two fights away from a guaranteed title shot? It feels great. You know, uh, three days ago I was nobody, and now I'm two fights away from a title shot. So. Uh, you know, one fight at a time. I got to go out there and uh, do the same thing to Daniel, and uh, it's going to be a different puzzle that I got to piece together. He's a much different fighter, so um, you know, I have, a, I have an idea what I want to do, but I'll, I'll have, I'll know exactly what I want to do in a few days when I uh, get enough video and really look at him and uh, figure out how the fight's going to go down before it does. Yeah, the fight is approximately four weeks away. How are you feeling then after that fight? Is in injuries? Any knocks? Any bruises? No, absolutely not. I have a like a small bruise on right above my knee, but it like it's it'll be gone tomorrow. You know what I mean? Oh, brilliant! Um, brilliant. And obviously, your next fight, as you say, is going to be against Daniel Weichel. He had a, an impressive win as well. He managed to get a stoppage uh, in the first round, if I remember rightly, on his fight. What are your views on him as an opponent? Uh, <laughs> I, he's definitely the most experienced, right? He's got forty fights. That's, that's a ton of that's fights. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know he won't be he won't be nervous at all he won't be hesitant and uh, you know sometimes newer fighters are a little hesitant he won't have that um, kind of clouding his judgment so he should come out ready to go ready to fight and uh, you know it should be another great fight. Well, obviously, I really appreciate you giving me your time. Congratulations on what was a fantastic performance on Friday. Thank you very much. I love your accent. I wish I uh, were American. I sound, I sound like a joke. I'll tell you what, you could have my accent if I can have your fighting skills. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You, you keep your accent. You you win, you win. Uh, okay, then. Before I let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do any shout-outs. You want to shout-out your Facebook and your Twitter and let the listeners know about your sponsors and also for anyone you want to thank? Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to uh, thank my sponsors. Um, you can check them out on my Facebook um, as my backdrop, uh, Matt Bessette, last name B-E-S-S-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. um, I also want to uh, thank up my sponsors on here. Uh, North American Grappling Association uh, has been with me for quite some time, and uh, Kip Cola is such a good dude. Um, Demato Chiropractic uh, is my new chiropractor, and uh, you know I, I never felt better, stronger. Um, more flexible for the fight and it's it really is i truly believe it's because of them um and um uh dot com. he's my my tattoo guy i haven't gone to him in a while but uh you know look him up he's awesome uh, i, I want to get covered my entire body before i'm dead so i'll <laughs> go back to him <laughs> um yeah and then look me up on twitter too uh mangler bjj is my my uh my name well, I really appreciate you giving me your time, and I can't wait to see you step into the octagon again, into the cage again, and fight Daniel Weichel. Thank you very much. Thanks for the Skype.